So street photography is a popular genre of photography. There's many an Instagram account dedicated to this type of photography, run by photographers who are shooting nothing else. And also some great YouTube channels run by photographers who aim to teach you the art of getting great street pictures. Inevitably, this leads to plenty of those top 10 list style videos, which I guess this is one of those two in a way, except it's 11, a list of 11 tips and advice. But I hope this provides practical advice from my point of view that helps you get the results unique to you. And I think that's key with street photography. Don't just copy everyone else. Aim to get results with your own unique stamp on them. And that's exactly what those intro examples of mine were all about. Street photography is about capturing people in your images and therefore it's different to standard urban photography then. It means being in the right place at the right time, having a keen eye to spot the unexpected or just waiting for the right person to walk into your chosen scene. But how do you take those type of photos? So let's start this video with the gear you need. What do you need to do successful street photography? Right, let's clear this up straight from the off. Any camera will do for street photography. You do not need a specialist camera for street photography. Your phone will do, your digital SLR camera will do, and any other camera that you no doubt already own will do too. There are no street photography cameras. That's just marketing or influences suggesting one is better than the other. I've used Fuji cameras, Olympus cameras, Panasonic cameras, Ricoh cameras, and Canon cameras. They all work, they all get the shots. If you think one is better, better suited, or more stealth, shall we say, then you're wrong, they are not. No, it's, it's you, the photographer, that needs to be better or more stealth, not the camera. So whatever camera you own, then that's perfect, ideal, and you don't need to buy another one instead. Save your money for the bus fare into town or the train into the city. Now, choosing the right lens is key though, and this can make a difference. So the only wrong lens to choose here is a telephoto lens. That is the wrong lens. If you feel the need to stand back and shoot from a distance with a telephoto lens, well, that's not being stealthy. It could be instead seen as a bit creepy. So if this is your approach, then I would say street photography is not for you. You won't capture those unique moments like this. So put the telephoto lens away and choose something wider instead. Now, what you do choose is up to you, whatever you feel is your focal length but something between 28mm and 50mm is, is usually the ideal. It depends on what type of pictures you want to get, what you're trying to capture, what context and how much of the surrounding environment you want to include too. But those wider focal lengths are classic street lenses and therefore ideal. You can use a zoom lens if you wish, but a prime is better. A prime lens can be smaller and less obtrusive but its main advantage is that it's a fixed field of view. You don't really have time to be zooming in and out for street photography. So having a fixed lens means a quicker approach. It means you're also considering that field of view as you shoot, and that's important too. Learning to see with one focal length. So, should you have your camera set to auto or full manual mode? Well, either or both. It depends, as they both can work. It depends on the situation. Semi-auto mode is quicker uh, and more convenient and gives you one less thing to think about. So aperture priority, for instance, can work for that. But if the light is consistent, then full manual mode can work too. If it's a, a bright and sunny day and you're working with shadows, which we'll talk about later, then manual mode fixes that exposure for consistent results. Whereas an auto mode will be constantly changing as the camera detects light and shadow areas in the scene. And those constant changes can make you miss the perfect shot. So consider the scene, consider the light, and set your camera to suit. Mm -hmm. 
Now, a bit like your exposure modes, there's two ways to focus for street photography. You, of course, have standard autofocus, where you're relying on the speed of your camera's AF system to focus accurately when you spot a potential victim. This works 90% of the time, and the one I personally use most often. And most cameras work fast enough to capture that moment when needs be. The other way is zone focusing. Now, modern lenses are sadly not ideal for this. The lack of depth of field scales on most lenses, even prime lenses these days, makes this harder to set than when we had full manual prime lenses. So here you first need to preset your aperture to around f8. Then to make sure this still gives you a decent shutter speed of say 125th of a second or more, make sure your ISO suits the light. So 200 ISO for a bright sunny day and 400 or 800 for an overcast day as a minimum. Then focus your lens manually a few meters in front of you, say to around two meters if you're getting close to people or maybe five meters if you're shooting more from afar, and then just leave it there. Here, you're working with depth of field. Two meters is your, your guesstimate for the point of focus, and F8 gives you the breathing room around that, or a zone for your subject to be in. So with your camera set up, I think you need to have a clear approach in your mind. You need to know what you want to capture and how. What do you want to say with your images? What environment are you shooting in? And does this have a bearing on the end result? Why are you shooting in this location? Are you working with the light or are you purely after that brief moment in time and that right person to, to make the shot? What time of day will you go out and will that make a difference to the potential shots you get? Having an approach I think will help you get the results you want rather than aimlessly trying to get great street pictures and then ultimately failing. So my approach, which I hope is revealed in my picture examples in this video, is from the vision of an urban photographer, which is what I would class myself as. My examples have people in them, but many of them are my interpretations of the tips that I'm going through. They are my versions of street photography which are perhaps a bit different to how others do them, which is my approach to every single picture I do take, to be different. Otherwise, mine will just end up looking like everyone else's. I don't want that, and neither should you. So that's why I said it's important to put your own stamp on your results that you get. Now, a classic street photography result, or maybe a cliche one, depending on which way you look at it, are the ones when you use light and shadow to create shapes to frame your subject. It's a good technique, and I've done them myself, of course, and you can get some stunning results, and therefore sunny days are great for street photography with this type of technique. Here, you can use manual exposure so that you meter for the sunlit areas and allow the shadows to fall into well, just that, shadow. With your camera set to manual, this doesn't change. And as long as your chosen subject is in the sunlit area, you'll get the dramatic high contrast effect in a perfect exposure, which your histogram will reveal. And you can increase the impact of these by setting your camera to its monochrome mode, as it's purely all about the shapes in these results from the light and the shadow. Now, overcast days can still work, of course. You, you just get a softer result. But if you do need light for the result you want, and it's just overcast, or worse, just raining, which of course is also great for interesting street photography results, so don't forget to go out in the rain as well. But if it is overcast, what I often do is head inside for my street photography. So museums and art galleries are great places to shoot, as this is another place where people gather, and more importantly, are usually engrossed in other things, making candid shots really easy. Plus, you can capture people juxtaposed against the other visitors in the gallery, or just their interaction with the exhibits. You're looking for unique moments, recording this as quickly as you can unnoticed, but because you're inside, the light levels will be lower, so make sure you use a higher ISO and just seek out those street shots inside instead. You never know, you may have more luck in these environments than 
out on the actual street. Now, I said earlier that a camera won't necessarily make you more stealthy. No, that's down to you. But there are a couple of techniques you can use to get shots without being noticed. The first is to set your camera to its silent mode. Mirrorless cameras can be set to their electronic shutter mode so there is no actual physical sound as you press the shutter. And so no one will know you've actually taken a picture. Use this in combination with your camera's flip up or flip out screen as this allows you to easily take photos totally unnoticed, even if you're stood right in front of someone as you're not looking through the viewfinder and instead down at the camera's screen. Shooting from the hip is another great technique, an old school one really, but one that is also a bit hit and miss as you're effectively shooting blind. But if you really want candid, random captures, then with a bit of luck, you may capture something unique this way too. Now, street photographers often talk about using layers when shooting their street scenes. And this is simply capturing a moment when there's more than one person in the shot. And instead, it's a range of people at different distances, creating a layered effect. So you, you might have some people walking one way and some another, and your main subject is caught between those. It creates a, a nice effect, so do be on the lookout for this composition effect. Views through windows and out the other side will also have this layering effect, so find an ideal shot window for these kind of shots too. And finally, are you a hunter or do you fish? So there are two ways to describe street photography shooting styles. A hunter is on the lookout for the ideal capture, walking, watching, and waiting to find those unique moments as you walk along the street with your fellow humans. This of course is changing all the time and you need to be observant and on the lookout for those brief moments of magic. The other technique is fishing. You find a great location, say a, a busy corner, say a busy corner with great light, and you just wait for the right person to turn up. How long you stand and wait, well, is up to you. It depends on how committed you are to getting the shot. My advice here is to again, look like you're doing something else. Look down at your camera rather than have it up to your eye. But of course, have your camera set up ready to take the shot. You'll find people often stop in their tracks to avoid spoiling your potential shot if they see you with your camera up to your eye, whereas you want them to walk into the frame. So you can avoid them stopping simply by looking like you are busy doing something else instead and not getting ready to take their picture. Now, if you are accidentally caught taking someone's picture, then my advice is to just smile a smile goes a long way. Give a nice smile simply to acknowledge you have taken someone's picture, but you're being open about it, and most people won't mind. A smile is often all that is needed to prevent a person being offended by that in any way. Either this, or just try looking behind and beyond your victim. Pretend to look into the distance as if they weren't the subject of your capture. With no eye contact, you're looking at something else, They'll even often look back to see what you were looking at and therefore you've got away with it. And no doubt you're long gone by then anyway. So that's my guide to street photography, my advice and my approach. Those were some of my examples in my style and my take on the genre. So, what's yours? I'll see you next time.